So it was raining yesterday. Today it's beautiful and sunny. Welcome to Kansas. We scored some really good deals on some more equipment for the shop. Let's get this stuff offloaded and tell you the story about the equipment. Pretty interesting. Right after this. Welcome back guys. You caught me in my nasty, dingy moving clothes. It's hot today and I'm not gonna put on nice clothes to move this stuff. But this is really cool. This is how I furnish my shop without spending thousands of dollars. Actually, I didn't even have to buy this stuff. It's a really interesting story. Hoovy from Hoovy's Garage actually found all this stuff at an estate sale. I got a phone call and it says, Wizard, I just bought you a bunch of cabinets and metal things that came out of an industrial setting. All you have to do is go pick them up. I, I got them picked up. I haven't even had a chance to look at them, what's inside of them, what they look like. I don't know. I guess I can't turn that stuff down. So what you see here today is Hoovy's selection. To get all the stuff here that you see around me, he spent a couple hundred bucks. That's it. That is how you furnish a professional auto shop without going broke. I know of many shops, I've heard of many shops go under because they have furnished their shop or bought software or tools way above and beyond what they should be able to afford and they have trouble getting that paid back. I won't have any trouble paying back a couple hundred bucks with the kind of stuff he brings me to fix. There'd be no trouble to pay this stuff back. One thing you guys need to realize is everything you see here, if you went to a hardware store or some store that sells these things, it'd be 150 for that, 190 for that, 200 for that, 350 for that, 300 for that. You could easily get over a grand, way over a grand, buying some cabinets. And I can totally find a really good use for everything you see here for a couple hundred bucks. That's the way to go. Let's go through each of these items and see what we got. This is a really handy little shelf here. It's metal, it's not cheap particle board. This is what I really like about all this stuff. It's not cheap. This will be great for lightweight items like oil filters or whatever, belts, whatever we want to store in the shop. It's not going to carry a whole lot of weight. It's not going to rot away and just collapse like a particle board cheap Walmart shelf. So, and this is an old blower fan or something. Keep in mind, Hoovy bought this stuff. He thought that I could use this. I guess we can. I imagine this thing will move a lot of air. It looks like a blower fan and a motor out of a central heat and air unit or something. But it actually has a plug to plug it in the wall. So you plug it in and move some air. It's actually called a squirrel cage fan. I just call it a blower fan, but I think we can find a use for that. Why not? Having it in a shop environment, though, with something like this that looks like it's kind of handmade or put together, this is very much something they could get their fingers in and hurt their fingers. Or So keep that in mind when you pick stuff up like this. If you're running a shop, somebody could get hurt with this. So the next thing down the line is a really big, hefty cabinet. Solid metal. Not cheap particle board, like I said a minute ago. Let's take a look inside. Like I said, I haven't even looked inside of these things. Oh, very nice. Individual shelving. I thought this might be a hollow chamber in here, but wow, very good. That'll be very, very nice. I'm not sure what AGM 142 is, but hey, it's gonna work great. And again, another big hefty metal shelf. Let's take a look inside. also has nice deep, sh wow, this one's much deeper than the other one. Very, very handy. 
Now, what can we use these for, Car Wizard? These, these two cabinets can be used to store things that have a little bit more weight to them, like special tools, like harmonic balancer pullers, ball joint tools, all those heavy items that can actually make shelving sag from so much weight. These are heavy metal, they'll be able to handle the weight, so very, very good buy here. Neither of these cabinets that Hoovy found came with keys, but that's not a problem. I can make them work again. As you can see, there's little numbers printed on the lock itself where the key goes in. You just use that code and you can get another key made. See, different numbers there. That corresponds to the key that it takes to open that lock. We've actually done this before with our front desk that's in the office. We used that code that was on the lock and we got a set of keys and made it a functional lock again. So we'll be able to lock these up if there's items in there that are have a great value, we can actually secure them and lock them. And that's very good for insurance purposes because if we ever got anything stolen, they'd be like, did you lock the cabinets? We can say, yes, we did. Therefore, it turns into break and enter charge for the, as far as the police is concerned. I had to break something to get into it. Now we'll move down the line a little bit. These are a little bit smaller cabinets. We'll store smaller items, obviously. Let's take a look inside of this one. Looks like the shelves have fallen down in there, but they're there. But I can set that up, that's no problem. This will be another smaller cabinet that I can use to store smaller tools or things that don't weigh so much or take up smaller spaces like a little power steering puller or something. It also has the top to it that's low enough. You could use it as a surface to store things there or work off of it if you wanted to. So that's a pretty good buy there too. This would be handy by the hydraulic press actually now that I think about it. I could put all my tools that I use to press bearings and things inside of here and hey, that'll be great. This one's much smaller than the big ones behind me, but let's take a look inside. Well, well, there's a drink in there. Somebody, hey, whatever, I'm thirsty. Still tastes good. Anyways, this is a little bit smaller than the other ones, but this cabinet may actually be useful where I could set it up by the front door of the shop and parts people that make parts deliveries can set parts in there. That, so when one of the employees in the shop wants to check if a part has arrived, they can just come to the cabinet, there it is, take it, and go get to work. That might be actually handy for that. <sighs> Whoever left this behind, thank you. It's very refreshing. Okay, this here is some shelving and it's got a nice deep pan at each shelf. This will be perfect for aerosols or greases or things that come in small containers. If they were to leak or cause any issue, it'll stay contained within the pan and not spill all over the ground. This definitely is going to work great for aerosols. We actually have a cabinet for those now, but it's a little bit small. This will be a nice upgrade. And the last thing that Hoovy thought that I needed was a pair of drive on ramps. These are older ones, they're metal. Today, most of them are plastic. I definitely can use those if there's a quick job where I just need to pull it up on there and check a sensor or something on the underneath. This will be very, very handy. And for a couple hundred bucks, he got all this stuff. It's really great. At first, when he told me, I didn't know what to say. I was like, uh, okay. But I actually think he did a very good job. It's almost like he runs a shop himself. Well, he definitely contributes to one, that's for sure. Now, none of these are matching colors and they don't look as good because there's a, a tan, a gray, a white. I understand that, but they can be painted to, to match the shop or whatnot. But the nice thing is, and the thing to think about is, you really can't buy stuff of this quality anymore. All of these came from the 70s or 80s. They're older shelving and cabinets. They're definitely not from 2018 or something. They're made of very heavy gauge steel and we had to use a dolly to move some of these because they're so heavy. But that's exactly what I look, that's exactly what I'm looking for in a professional shop. Heavy duty stuff that's gonna last. And I didn't pay much for it, or Hoovy didn't pay much for it. Anyways, it was a little tough on Mrs. Wizard. She actually had a small accident on her bike while she was riding around town here and really banged up her elbow pretty bad. So I'm glad she was able to help, but she wasn't able to lift as heavy as she normally would. But hey, we got the job done. And thinking about getting the job done and using equipment that's older and much cheaper, let's talk about the Dodge Ram that had traded that STS Cadillac, the 93 STS, for that green Dodge Ram. Let's do an ownership update of that 
real quick. Let's head on over there. This is the old 1998 Dodge Ram with a 318 that we recently got when I traded a Cadillac STS for it. And it's been very, very handy. As you've seen today, we were able to haul, we were able to hook the trailer to it and haul all that stuff here to the shop. Let me show you a few things that I did on it and how it's been a real good truck for me so far. One of the things I had to repair right after getting this is the timing cover gasket that's right under the alternator. You can see it behind the dipstick tube. You can see the gasket there. It would literally just pour out coolant out of that. That's where the water pump pumps coolant into the block. It was leaking pretty bad. So we had to take the timing cover off and put a new gasket, which is actually very common on these 318s and 360s. While we had all that apart on the front, we put a new water pump and a new serpentine belt. You might as well while you're there. We did an oil change. Got all that stuff taken care of. It's all in good shape now. I haven't had to really do much else to the engine. It really runs great. Now, in a previous video that I did on buy this, not that, mid-size trucks, I mentioned several times of makes and models of trucks that have cracked heads. No, not crack heads cracked heads. In the Dodge Dakotas you could get to 318, 5.2, or to 360, 5.9, and I said those things always have cracked heads. This is a 318 and it also has cracked heads. But some of you commented that these trucks can get that way and just be a trooper and soldier on and on and on and they don't have any issues. And that's basically what happens here. It runs a little rough when it's cold. It doesn't idle perfectly smooth because of the cracked heads. But it's known that these don't ever really get any worse. They don't break down, they don't fail. You just kind of deal with a little bit rough idle. You can still get work done and still make use of these trucks. How will I know it gets too bad? It needs to be refixed. If you start getting what symptoms of a blown head gasket, where there's coolant in the oil, or if it starts running really bad, it might be time for a new set of heads to call Clearwater Cylinder Heads so they can tell you, send me your cracked heads and I'll send you a new pair. But being I'm a mechanic, if it comes down to that, I'll be able to just get a new set of heads, replace these, and be back in business for very little cost because there won't be any labor. This truck has been very useful and everything else is in such good shape. I might as well just hang on to it and use it for hauling loads like we did here. In order to get basic jobs around the shop like that done, I don't need a $79,000 Duramax. This does the job just fine. Let's take a look at the interior. As you see, the door panel is in position and everything's reattached like it should be. When I got this truck, both of the door panels were barely attached. They were about to fall off. We needed all new clips. Somebody had tried to put speakers, aftermarket speakers in this vehicle and they really didn't do a very good job reattaching everything. We got that taken care of. It didn't cost very much, probably a couple bucks and clips and it fixed just fine. We got that taken care of and now everything works great. The dash has a dash mat on it underneath. I'm not going to peel it up, but it's it's cracked pretty bad. And I know you can buy just the, the shell and purchase and replace it, but I use this thing to haul nasty, dirty loads and, and wood and trash and just like we did cabinets and things today. It doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't need to be in good, perfect shape. This covers up just nice. It looks fine. I've got a cheap $20 eBay radio. And really, it's a piece of junk radio. But it works. I can play music. I can do Bluetooth. It actually works fine. I rarely even drive this truck just for work only. I use it to, to work and get things done. And that radio works perfectly fine. This one's got a tear on the driver's side over there. It's not real bad, but otherwise the seats are in decent shape. And the headliner was coming down. It's now just foam. I'm just going to leave it that way. It'll, it'll be fine. And in this hot weather we're having right now, one of the most important things to me is having the AC working. And this one worked beautiful. It's ice cold. I didn't have to do anything to the AC. And I'm very grateful for that because a replacement AC system can very easily be a grand of 1500, if not more. So I'm really happy about that. So the purpose of the video today is to give you guys an insight and kind of the, the life of owning and running a shop, some of the things you have to do on the weekends. That was just kind of thrown on me, all this cabinets and things, but I'm glad that Hoovy found them. Those will go to great use inside the shop. I'll have Junior Mint set those up on Monday and we will definitely make use of them. Most of you don't need 12 or 15 different cabinets or shelves 
But if you are needing one or two, it always makes sense to check an estate sale or Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist, something like that. If you were to go to an auction site, those cabinets would go really high probably. So check out an estate sale. That's what that's what Hoovy did and we got a really good deal. And gave you guys an ownership update of the Dodge Ram. I fixed some of the things that I talked about here and we are using the truck. It is doing very good. Don't forget to check the links below in the description. There's a lot of really cool things to check out there, tools you can buy. If you haven't hit the subscribe button already, go ahead and do that now. We got many more cool videos to come. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.